an Audi with almost 200,000 miles. How is this even possible? Let's get started. That's right, guys. You didn't mishear me. Almost 200,000 miles, and it's a 2019. It's only about four years old. Three, three years, even though we're in 2023, we're not a full year into 2023, so it's not that old, almost 200,000 miles. Isn't that crazy? We always think of these German cars, or they'd be Porsche, Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes. Once you get close to 200, you're done. That car is done. It's going to nickel and dime you, and it's going to be like broken every two weeks. But that's not been the case on this one. There's a reason for it, and I'll show you guys why here in a minute. But let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. So there is the front of this Q5. Like I said, it is a 2019. It is in very good shape. It should be. It's not that old, but it does have a ton of miles. It has, I don't know if it's the second, third, fourth set of tires on it, some Firestones on it, some nice looking wheels. But as we go down the side, you would think, oh, that's a nice looking Audi. It's a few years old. It's probably got 50, maybe 80,000 miles on it. It's double that. As we get to the back, you can see it's been obviously driven quite a bit. It's a little dirty. This customer drove from four hours away to come have us service their vehicle. And down that side, also very clean and very nice. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Let's take this little cover off. So here we are under the hood with a little four cylinder for a big Q5, but it is turbocharged. It has plenty of power. It is the 2.0 turbo that they've been using for a long time now. But it's a pretty good engine, and obviously it's lasted this long, and it's in pretty good shape. One thing I really like about, and I would prefer to have this engine on a Q5 if you're going to work on it yourself, or even if a mechanic's working on it to save time, is there's literally almost a foot of room around the whole engine. This would be wonderful to work on. You wouldn't get so mad, you're not fighting, scraping your hands. This is glorious to work on. It's so much better than what I worked on today. I worked on a GMC Sierra, and it just, you can see my arm is red still. Hours later, it scraped me to high heavens. I don't think that would be the case on this 2.0 turbo. There's tons of room around this thing. There's nothing broken on it. It's here just for a service, oil change, check over, inspection, make sure everything looks good. So I really don't have anything to show under the hood other than the amount of space around it is amazing. And it's a fact it's a four-cylinder on a basically a mid-size SUV. It's not a Q3, it's not a Q7, but still it's a pretty big SUV to have a four-cylinder. Let's go ahead and hop into the interior and let Mrs. Wizard give you guys a tour. There it is, ladies and gents. Okay, he's close. It's 184,000 miles, 477. And when they get back home, it'll get even that much closer. So it won't take too much longer. If they put this many miles on it in a couple of years, that 200,000 is just a few moments away. As we go up to the dash, you'll see that it is in really great shape. It is hard plastic and really hasn't had too much time to do anything other than collect a few bits of dust and debris, uh, but no cracks, no crevices, nothing going on up there. As we scroll down, again, more hard plastic and some lovely faux wood grain there. And it does have a nice screen, which is controlled by our wheel down here. It isn't touchscreen, but it does have a nice wheel and controls that you can navigate right there. Easy when you're just cruising down the road, you can just easily lay your hand and easily just reach over, grab it. It does have a very short, very stubby little gauge selector there, but it does what it needs to. It just obviously pretty straightforward. We don't have too many controls there since it is an automatic. As we move over to the seat, it is a very nice leather and both seats are in this good of condition, 200,000 miles, and they both look this nice. Very simple gray leather, a little bit of bolster on the side, nothing crazy, but they are relatively comfortable. As we move to that door cart again, more of that wood grain and just more of that hard plastic as well, which is quite durable and will last quite a while. 
in the back seat. It has a little space for three, but I'm not sure if I'd want to find that center section very comfortable considering that you're on the armrest and that center section, which isn't quite designed the same as the other side. So, but it can hold five people, but I wouldn't want to be that fifth one sitting on the hump there. Scroll up, no Cheeto fingers, great condition, looking good, no marks, no blemishes, nothing like that. Lots of different controls we can keep track of, lights and whatnot, garage door openers, what most modern cars have today anyway. So here we are at that steering wheel. Lots of controls here, and there's lots of controls everywhere. There's a control right there by my knee for the cruise control, different controls on the steering wheel for navigating through the different systems, and again for our telephone. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Luckily, we've got a simple radio control there. That's the one that most of us control the most when we're going down the road is making sure we got the right song playing and at the right volume. Otherwise, got some nice interlocking rings there in the center, but it's a rather open steering wheel overall, and the leather on it is in really great condition. So if it looks this good with 200,000 miles on it on the inside, let's see what it looks like on the underside. So here we are on the underneath and we can see tons of panels and things in the way. And although we can't really see the engine very well, we've done the service and oil change, everything was nice and dry underneath. But one thing I would check for, especially on these fibrous type panels, is that you can run your hand across it and it should be dry. There shouldn't be any coolant or oil or anything soaked into it. And this one is nice and dry. Let's check the brakes. nice and thick. The boots are not leaking or cracked. Our sway bar link is intact. Our strut is nice and dry. Nothing loose there. The steering rack boot, nice and dry. There's nothing slimy feeling on the inside. Brakes are good on this side. Boots are good. Sway bar link is good. Nothing loose there, no torn bushings or anything. And our steering rack is also good there. As we get to the back back here, here's some more of these fibrous panels. Again, you can run your hands across it, and it, if it's nice and dry, there's very likely no serious leaks going on. Up in there you can see the transmission and the back of the engine, which sits rather far forward on this vehicle. That's why there's so much room around the engine. There's the back of the transmission and there's a control module there. And from back here we can see there's no leaks going on at the back of the transmission. Everything's good there. Check our drive shaft is good. Our resonator there is in good shape. Check back here on our drive shaft. Everything's good there. Nothing leaking from the fuel tank. All the panels and everything are intact, which is nice. There is a small tear right here, but it's nothing serious. Here's some more of our fiber panels. Check these back brakes. And they've got about 20 to 30% remaining. They still have a little life left. Sway bar link is good. Same thing over here on the brakes, about 20, 30% remaining. Sway bar link is good. Nothing loose there. This does not have air suspension, so we don't have to worry about that. The shock is nice and dry. It's a little resonance absorption device or something. That shock is nice and dry, nothing loose there. And here is our one into two muffler. Some vehicles used to do two into one, but this one is one into two. So it makes it look more sporty, I guess. I think these tires are fairly new. Let's see if we can find a date code. Five of 22, so yes. They're less than a year old, so I don't have to worry about tires. So as you can see, the underneath looks like a 50,000 mile Audi but it's almost getting close to 200. It's so crazy. Let's get this thing on the ground.
So as you can see, this thing is in very good shape. Everyone knows with the German cars, they are very maintenance intensive. And most people skimp over that. They try to drive it like it's a Honda Accord. Oil changes, maybe some tires, the rest should be good, right? Not on a German car, they require so much more attention to maintenance. There's certain things on the car, bushings and bearings and different things that at a certain amount of miles you should just go ahead and replace them because that's part of the maintenance of keeping this thing in tip-top shape. But fortunately, with this customer, I don't have to preach to them about maintain your vehicle if you want it to last. If anything, they're going to preach to you today. Let's take a look. Here you go, Wizard. Oh, wow, Mrs. Wizard really threw the book at me on that one. Let me lay this out on our little dryer. We have a dryer here that we dry our rags, shop rags and things. I want to go through this with you guys and show you this. So here is the maintenance records for this car. It even has the picture on the front. This is the customer's list of all the repairs and maintenance they've done to it. And as you can see, pages and pages and pages and pages over the last few years. I'm going to go through some of them real quick. If this is going to be boring for you, I guess you can move on. But I just want to show you guys what it takes to maintain one of these cars. And if you do, it pays off. Look how clean that thing was. Almost 200,000 miles. It's almost like a new car. And there's a reason for that. It's right here. Thanks, no muffler, Newton. Here's a flat repair. Tire rotation. New tires, scheduled maintenance, oil filter, tire rotation, a flat repair, investigate a clunk, some sort of a bushing was replaced, another service, Safe Light Auto Glass windshield, a repair shop, oil change, service, Another service, a tire rotation, tune-up with spark plugs, a transmission service, another tire rotation. That's a lot of tire rotations this thing has had, but it's also had tons of miles put on it. So to spare you the rest of the book, which is very girthy as you can see, they did have one here where fuse 12 was blown and it was traced to a rain sensor some of the wiring that went to it, they fixed it. That was really the only major thing. There's a lot of little things like that here and there, but 90% of everything in this book is tires, a windshield, oil changes, spark plugs, services, and everything is documented. It goes kind of like in reverse order. It starts here and goes forward in time all the way to, which we'll be adding one with the service we did here today. So if you're looking for an Audi or German car with high miles, make sure that they throw the book at you, literally. Look how thick that is, guys. Think how much money is here. Thousands keeping this thing running. So that's how you keep one of these expensive German cars on the road and happy. There's been no major engine out, transmission major jobs because things were not skipped ever at all. And it has paid off. They have gotten really more than a normal life out of an Audi. It probably can go quite a bit longer if they keep up the maintenance like they are. So you ask yourself, I've got 80,000 miles, 100,000 miles on my Mercedes, Porsche, Volkswagen, what can I do to extend the life? If you don't already have at least a book that thick, you've already made a mistake there. When you first buy one of these, you should keep up with the maintenance constant through the entire life of the vehicle. And they can last a long time that way. But like I said, most people treat them like a Honda Accord. And then it, it breaks down and they're like, oh, this thing's a piece of junk. It's not a piece of junk. It just requires much higher maintenance. I've heard people say, I don't want an Audi. I don't want a Mercedes because they're in the shop all the time. This thing is running perfect and it's spent a lot of time in the shop. But not because it's broken or been skimped on on maintenance, but because it's had the maintenance done. It's been in the shop for tire rotations, windshield, oil changes, spark plugs, all those things, keeping things up to snuff and in the best shape that the person can. This is not for the faint of heart, though. If you're a person that 
anything more than a few services here or there and you get really pissed off at your car and like I don't have time for this then an Audi is probably not for you a Mercedes-Benz a BMW is probably not for you a Porsche is not for you so stop looking on marketplace for one of them because if that pisses you off it's probably the wrong car if that looking at that book makes you get a headache you're like oh hell no I wouldn't want that car you probably need a Toyota you should buy a Toyota or a Lexus. But Tyler from Hoovy's Garage has a t-shirt that I really love. Why drive boring cars? Now I know I push Toyotas really hard for cars that last a long time and don't require a lot of intervention with maintenance like this one did. I don't know if I could drive a Toyota every day though. I would get really bored with it. I probably, you guys know I go through a lot of cars fast. If, yes, I, I really know you go through a lot yes. of cars. If I drove Lexuses and Toyotas, it would even speed that up even faster. So, has this customer been nickeled and dime constantly through the whole life of this vehicle? Yes, the book proves that. But the customer was fully accepting of that. And in return for his due diligence, this thing is still in tip-top shape. When it drives down the street, people say, that's a nice Audi, that thing's clean, it's probably got 50,000 miles on it, and they would be none the wiser that it's getting close to 200. So if you're out there looking for an Audi, Mercedes, you can plan on that thick book. That's how you take care of it. That's how you keep it on the road. If you're curious what kind of tools we would use to work on this car or any other 30 or 40 cars we have in the shop at the moment, Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we started off the new year with a bang. 12 cars waiting in the shop ready to be fixed. Videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.